Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. As I progress through the ABRSM Grade 6 Music Theory Workbook, I now turn my attention to question 4. In question 4, exercise 1, I work through the harmonic analysis of a piano sonatina by Bender and here we really start to peel back the layers of the music and we look to see what's in the composer's mind and how does the music achieve the effect that it does. In this lesson I help you to see the key structure, the phrase structure of the piece, chord types and cadences can be described, we look at how to fully realise a given ornament and we look to observe which notes are essential harmony notes and which are non-essential harmony notes or auxiliary notes. The full lesson is available on my Patreon channel. If you visit patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill, you'll find the whole lesson there and you can find the links to that in the cards and in the description box. Everything you need to fully understand the advanced theory and chord recognition that we will be required to understand in this question can be found in my Harmony and Composition textbook. This book is available from Amazon and you'll find the links to that in the cards and in the description box also. After this short little video you can see extracts and samples from the full lesson to show you exactly how I help you step by step through the whole of this question. Thanks. Let's look at number two in bar eight, so here. We have a low G and then we have a B flat, remember, because of your key signature. And so if I just continue, G to B is a major third, one, two, three. G to B flat is a minor third, so it's a minor third. However, we're not quite there because it's not one, two, three, it's an octave plus one, two, three. And so that makes it a compound minor third. These are going to need to be, we either, we're either out of time, which we haven't really put enough alter, alternating embellishment in. And then remember that often times, and certainly appropriate to this sort of classical piece, um, we need a little turn at the end. So we're going to do that again. D, C, B flat, C. It's impossible to say. You've got to sing it, haven't you? Even though I'm not a singer. So all of these will be filling in that crotchet beat to get us to the end of the bar. So if we break that into two sets of four, that's going to be demi semis. Because we know that four demi semis makes a quaver. Four demi semis makes a quaver. That's all. We have an A in the bass. Then we've got an F and a C. So there's our F A C with an E flat. So we've got the first, the third, the fifth, and again we've got a seventh. And here F A C E. We tend to find sevenths usually in the usual run of chords on chord two or chord five. That's where they tend to occur. And then, uh, so we know it's a chord five with a seventh, so we would add five with a seventh. However, we need to know which position we're in. and.